So the first way that I want to solve this problem is, you guys remember we've talked about compound inequalities. We've talked about when you have an and compound inequality and when you have an or compound inequality, right? And remember the and was where the two inequalities intersected, right? And the or was where, you know, it was either one inequality or it was the other inequality. Sometimes they would intersect though and sometimes they wouldn't. Now, when you have an inequality and it's written in this format, whenever you have the same signs are going in the same direction, it's going to be an and statement, okay? So since my inequality or my signs are in the same direction, I know this is going to be an and statement. Now, there is a way to solve this together. I don't want to get into that right now. I want to show you a way to solve them separately. So the way to solve them separately is to put your hand over one inequality sign and the answer. Therefore, I'm left with that. So I'm just going to rewrite that. Negative 3 is less than or equal to 7c plus 4. I told you and. Then you cover up the other inequality sign. So you're left with 7c plus 4 is less than 18. Then guess what? It's just like the other problems you guys have been doing, right? There's no difference. All you do is you solve. Solve for your variable, right here. Okay, now remember it's an and. So we're only gonna talk about where they intersect. So let's take a look at it. So it's a nice big number line, zero. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. One, two, three, four. So what we want to do is I'm going to graph, or at least I'm going to represent where both of them would be graphed, and then I'm only going to shade in where they intersect. So this one says, remember guys, when you're reading inequality, we always like to read left to right, correct? However, when you're reading inequality, if you have your variable on the right side, either flip it so your variable is on the left side, or read it from right to left. Remember, <coughs> always make sure your inequality sign, though, is still pointing the same way towards the variable. So you could say C is greater than negative 1. C is greater than negative 1. All right? Now, what does that mean? Remember, what values are greater than negative 1? So first thing I do is I make a dot at negative 1. It's greater than or equal to, my bad. So since it's equal to, that means that's going to be true. So you shade it in. So what value, when are the values true? When they're, when are the values true when they're greater than negative one? Is that going to be the values to the right or the values to the left? Which values are greater than negative one? The values to the right. right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of do a, a fake little line. So it's helpful to have a little pencil. I can just draw a little line going that way. Then I'm going to go to my, now my number two, and I make a circle. Now this one is just less than, so it's not going to be a filled in circle. So it says all values that are less than two. So where are the values that are less than two? The values to the right or to the left? So you guys can see I have a graph going infinitely to the left and a graph going infinitely to the right. But since I said, whenever you have the same signs going in the same direction, it's an and statement. When it's an and statement, we only care about where the two graphs intersect. So they intersect between the two points. So that's where I'm going to shade my graph. And all the rest of that stuff I did up top, we can just forget about. Ta-da! And that's it. Yay! Good. Any questions? Oh. No.